What's up everyone, Tara Roberts here with Fantasy Pros and we are talking players that you need to cut. This is the hard part of fantasy football, deciding when to let go. So let's talk through players that it's time to drop. But before we get started, want a chance to win a signed DJ Moore Carolina Panthers jersey courtesy of our friends at Pristine Auction. You need to subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now. Comment below on this video and that's it. We will be announcing the winner right here on the channel, so make sure to turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and to claim your prize. Now let's go ahead and dive in. I hate to start off the players to cut list this way because I really do love Kadarius Tony's talent, but at this point it's very clear. The Giants just don't care about all that talent. Tony had zero targets in two rush attempts for 23 yards on just a 12% snap count. He was outperformed by four receivers plus Saquon Barkley's receiving work. The Giants are visibly frustrated with Tony and disappointed in him off the field. There were a variety of issues throughout the offseason that the organization just wasn't happy about, and they were even willing to trade him. On top of all of that, we've yet to see him stay healthy for an extended period of time, there are just so many factors holding him back and not enough justification to keep him on your roster when there are actual usable fantasy assets available on waivers. James Cook had one carry for two yards and a 5% snap count in his week one debut. And to make matters worse, that one carry resulted in a lost fumble. It was an incredibly disappointing start to the season, particularly when many touted him as someone who could make an immediate fantasy impact and potentially overtake Devin Singletary. The pass-catching back role in Buffalo can be lucrative, but Buffalo ended up leaning on Zach Moss, who caught all six of his targets for 15 yards. But once again, the Buffalo backfield is looking like one where none of the backs are reliable or usable from a fantasy perspective. Moss had 7.6 fantasy points in full PPR, and Devin Singletary had 8.2 fantasy points. Even if Cook can carve out a role, we're looking at a situation similar to last year where none of the Buffalo backs made an impact until the team finally committed to Devin Singletary at the end of the season. This is a pass-heavy offense. And while Cook can be held on to in 14-team leagues since we've seen how quickly you can gain or lose favor in Buffalo, Cook just isn't worthy of a roster spot right now in 12-team leagues. Many people, myself included, went into week one thinking that Mike Davis was the Baltimore running back to roster with J.K. Dobbins inactive. It made sense. Davis had been with the team longer than Drake, who had only recently arrived in Baltimore after being cut by the Raiders. Davis figured to be useful if he was used similar to the way that the Ravens used Devonta Freeman last year. Freeman was a decent flex option. This is a run-heavy offense, so whoever is running the ball is very worthy of a roster spot. But on Sunday, Mike Davis played just 13% of snaps with two carries for 11 yards. J.K. Dobbins is trending towards being active this week. If Davis couldn't carve out a role with only Kenyon Drake and Justice Hill to compete with, there's no way he retains any value when Dobbins returns. Kadarius Tony is not the only droppable Giants receiver. Kenny Galladay has no business being on a fantasy roster at this point. His fall from top 10 receiver to being outplayed by Richie James is absolutely crazy. Galladay had two receptions on two targets for 22 yards on Sunday, and this isn't new. Weeks 9 through 18 last season, Galladay never caught more than three passes, had no touchdowns, and failed to reach double-digit fantasy points in full PPR. Not one time. 33% of Daniel Jones' targets this week went to Saquon Barkley, and both Sterling Shepard and Richie James outperformed Galladay. And if Wandale Robinson didn't get hurt, he likely would have outplayed Galladay as well. At some point, we just have to accept that a Galladay comeback just isn't going to happen. Fantasy managers should move on immediately. You are not the Giants. You owe him nothing. Cut Galladay and never look back. Mike Kosicki was on my players to avoid list heading into the season because the new offensive scheme for Miami and Gesicki's skill set just don't work together. Gesicki is a very talented player, but this situation just isn't going to work out for him. Gesicki had one reception on one target for one yard on Sunday. 
he was outsnapped by Durham Smythe. And Miami is absolutely loaded with pass-catching talent. I don't believe Gasicki has any value moving forward unless the Dolphins trade him. Jalen Tolbert has no business being on any fantasy roster. Even in 14-team leagues, you will find no use for him. I liked Tolbert as a late-round target in drafts because, with Michael Gallup out, the wide receiver 2 position in Dallas was wide open. But Tolbert had a poor preseason showing and was a healthy scratch in Week 1. I think Tolbert might have just blown his opportunity and simply won't have a role in this offense. And even if he did manage to carve out a tiny role, Dak Prescott's injury is a major blow to all Dallas pass catchers. There's no reason to roster Jalen Tolbert. Moving on to players to cut in shallow leagues. Irv Smith Jr.'s Week 1 debut was, well, not really a debut. Zero receptions on two targets with just a 31% snap count. Now, this is his first week back after seeing no action in preseason following his thumb injury, and this is his first actual game since 2020. So he just might need some time to ramp up. I'm willing to give him a bit more time before sending him off to waivers in 12-team leagues or deeper. But in shallow leagues, there's no point in holding on to him. You shouldn't be rostering multiple tight ends in shallow leagues, and Smith is just not someone that you can trust in a starting lineup right now. You have to move on. J.D. McKissick has always been a very intriguing fantasy player. There is absolutely no regularity, rhyme, or reason as to him and his boom games of 5 to 10 receptions and when it will occur. You just have to plug him in when you need some help and hope that it's one of those weeks where he scores 15 plus fantasy points. But this offseason has been up and down for McKissick. He was slated to sign with Buffalo before Washington pulled a fast one and re-signed him. The emergence of Brian Robinson dampened his value. And with Brian Robinson on the NFI list, McKissick was back in play. But Brian Robinson is making incredible strides and is back at practice doing drills and getting prepared to return. And where I get concerned for McKissick is if Robinson returns and assumes the lead back work on the ground, which was Washington's original plan, it looks like pass catching work will lean towards Antonio Gibson. Gibson had seven receptions on eight targets for 72 yards last week, and he looked fantastic. And this is how Gibson should actually be utilized. And if this happens, McKissick will be left without a role in the offense. You may just want to get ahead of this one and move on to greener pastures. Devontae Parker played 100% of snaps and only had one reception on two targets for nine yards. The snap count is fantastic, but Mac Jones' 21 completions went all over the place. Jacoby Myers was the target leader with six targets. Both Jonu Smith and Hunter Henry saw multiple targets, and all Patriots running backs got receiving work as well. No Patriots wide receiver will have significant target share in this offense that won't be throwing for high volume. Parker is someone that you can dump and grab someone with higher upside on waivers. And if it doesn't work out with the player that you pick up, you can always go back to Parker. Because more than likely, Parker will be there next week. And the following week. And the week after that. And that wraps things up for this week's Players to Cut. Remember, if you want a chance to win a signed DJ Moore Carolina Panthers jersey courtesy of our friends at Pristine Auction, you need to subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now, comment below on this video, and that is it. We will be announcing the winner right here on the channel, so make sure you turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and to claim your prize. Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our featured videos. And while you're at it, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Fantasy Pros, so you can get the latest news and updates to give you the edge you need in your fantasy league.